Midtown Church, Pastor Susie here, and if you're watching this on the day that it airs, well then Happy New Year's Eve to you. It's the last day of 2023, and December 31st also happens to be my husband's birthday, so happy birthday to you, Marcos. Um, many of you have prayed with us this year, and many of you know that uh, my husband actually went through some health issues earlier in the year. He uh, discovered that he had a congenital heart issue and he needed a life-saving surgery. So when we say Happy New Year and Happy Birthday, uh, that comes with a little bit of extra weight this year. We are grateful more than usual for another year ahead. But you know, the last days of December often cause all of us to do a little bit more reflecting. Uh, when we think back on all that happened in this past year, we might feel a whole lot of different things. Uh, maybe it was a good year for you. Maybe as you think back on 2023, you've got a highlight reel of all of the good things that happened. The top moments of 2023 flash before you as you reflect back on what this year was like. But maybe it felt really hard for some of you as well. Maybe 2023 was a year that was filled with a lot of struggle and a lot of pain. Maybe there are things that happened that you'd rather forget about, or maybe you even wish that they never even happened. Whatever the case may be, going into a new year, I hope that you've got some excitement around what's ahead. I hope that you still have some hope about what's to come in 2024. Now, I can't predict the future, but I will say that if 2024 is anything like the years past, if it's like last year or the year before, the year before that, I can pretty much guarantee that it's going to be a year filled with a combination of many moments that cause you joy and some moments that also cause you pain. You know, when we say uh, Happy New Year to one another, sometimes we'll, we'll say things or we'll write a card in a card to one another. We'll say things like, um, may this year be filled with many new blessings, lots of laughter and gladness, or I wish you nothing but joy and happiness in the year ahead. And those words are nice. I mean, I, I, I doubt that I'd really appreciate getting a card from a friend or from one of you that says, uh, I wish you lots of trials and struggles in this next year. Or um, I hope that 2024 will be filled with lots of challenging moments to stretch you and grow you and work that last nerve so that you'll need even more therapy in the next year. Like those aren't the kind of words that we tend to say to each other. And those aren't the kind of things that we hope for one another. But at the end of the next year, I bet that most of us would say that we'd like to be more mature, that uh, we're, we're stronger, that we're more firm or steadfast in our faith, that we've grown a lot because of the things that we've gone through in 2024. We don't want to just survive the next year, right? We want to be able to flourish. We want to thrive in the next year. While I do hope that this next year holds a lot of moments of laughter and celebration and good times, I also pray that we as a church family, as a people of God, that we would grow stronger and more mature, more dependent on God, more filled with the Holy Spirit, more empowered by the Holy Spirit, and that we would grow stronger and, and, and it would all be done unto the glory of God. But if we are going to become stronger, more mature, and more rooted and established in our faith, well, then that also means that we are going to go through times of trial and struggle. In 2024, you're going to hear us reference uh, this one verse a lot. We've, we've determined that we want to have a theme verse that carries us throughout the year, a theme verse to help remind us and encourage us and guide us through whatever 2024 has in store for us. So our theme verse for this next year is 1 Peter 5, verse 10, and it says this, And the God of all grace who called you into his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Let's marinate on this verse a little bit today. You know, like I said, we're going to refer back to this verse a whole lot in the next year because it's our theme verse for the entire year. But today in this short little sermonette, this, this devotional maybe we might call it, um, I, I want to look at some key words and phrases that will help us appreciate the deeper meaning of this verse. So for, first, let's look at the word grace. Uh, the God of all grace. 
You know, our God can be described in an infinite array of ways. I mean, our God is, is the God of all goodness, all kindness, all love, all power, all righteousness, all holy, all wisdom, all knowledge, right? All these things describe who our God is. But here, God is specifically described as the God of all grace. God is a God of grace, and, and, and here it's a good summary for the essence of who God is, the essence of God's nature. You know, some people view God as this vengeful, distant, even angry, wrathful God. But would a vengeful, distant, and uncaring, even angry God freely give us the gift of His Son so that we would be reconciled to Him? Uh, I don't think so. Our, our, our God is a God of grace. Our God is gracious. People often descri describe grace as unmerited or, or unearned favor. So we don't earn grace, and we are given grace by the God of all grace, who doesn't count our past mistakes or our shortcomings and our failures against us. In fact, God doesn't wait until we are worthy or deserving enough to receive His grace, because if, if God were to have to wait until we were deserving enough or, or until we were righteous enough to earn His grace, well, then we'd be waiting still. He gives it freely, abundantly, and consistently, not through our own merit. He gives us grace, which, yes, is unearned favor. But, you know, grace doesn't always look like favor as we think of favor. Now, whenever something really good or favorable happens, we, we could say that that's a blessing from God. Sometimes people even say that saying, well, favor ain't fair, right? And, and, and that's not untrue. Favor isn't fair. In fact, it's not fair that we get this free gift. It's not out of fairness. It's because of God's grace. But, you know, when people say favor ain't fair, uh, the favor of God is not always the manifestation of good fortune or, or happy circumstances. The favor of God may actually be marked by, by suffering and struggle. I know you might not want to hear it, but before you log off, let me explain. We are the recipients of God's grace. We're the recipients of God's grace in that we have received God's grace. We have received His love and His righteousness and forgiveness and the gift of relationship with God forever, for all of eternity. But we also ought to be marked by grace. Grace is the essence of who God is, and it ought to be part of the essence of who we are as well. See, if we have been given God's grace, we also ought to be able to give grace to other people. But beyond that, we also ought to be People who can withstand tough circumstances. People who can withstand suffering because we are marked by God's grace. We, we can handle situations with the grace of God. Um, you know, being full of grace doesn't mean that, that uh, we're, we're pushovers who just accept circumstances that come to us. It doesn't mean that we're, we're, we're weak or, or we're passive. In fact, being marked by God's grace, being able to withstand circumstances with grace and not in our own power, actually displays the, the power of God at work in us and, in, and through us. So God will grace you with His presence. God will give you the grace to handle a situation that goes beyond your ability in your own flesh or, or your own power. By God's grace and power, we are able to be uh, set above other people. See, Colossians 4 tells us, let your words always be gracious. Let your speech be seasoned with salt. And, and grace is the seasoning. Grace is that salt that flavors and, and preserves and sets you apart. Because we've been called by God, the God of all grace, let us be seasoned with grace. Let's keep going with this verse. So the God of all grace who called us into His eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while. Let's stop there. I'm going to stop for some further marinating here. So two things I really want to hone in on here. It says, after you have suffered a little while and eternal glory. There's different ways that you could interpret the scripture, but when you see these two phrases next to each other, suffered a little while and eternal glory, you may think to yourself, is glory only promised on the other side of eternity, aka not in this lifetime? And are these sufferings considered just a little while because in light of eternity, our time here on earth is just a little while? 
I don't think that that's a wrong interpretation because glory in its fullest, in its, its truest, best form will be experienced in eternity with Jesus. And we will suffer sometimes and sometimes we'll suffer a lot during our time here on earth, which is a little while in comparison to eternity. But be rest assured that suffering even here on earth is not all that we get before we get to experience eternal glory. Yes, God will give you the grace to make it through the struggle and pain of life. And the hope of glory for all eternity is what we have to look forward to. But before then, we will get glimpses of glory. We will have a foretaste of heaven. We'll be able to enjoy the presence of God and, and, and be able to celebrate the riches that we have in Christ while we're here, even here on earth. And, and even, you know, the times that we get together on Sunday to worship, even though we're not together physically today, every time that we worship, and I mean worship, not just sing songs or, or listen to someone speak, every time that you have an encounter with God, or any time that you have a response to experiencing God, any time that you give praise, this is worship. So any time that we worship, we get a glimpse, a foretaste of glory, eternal glory with Jesus. And it's a gift. And in this lifetime, so is pain. In fact, pain can intensify your worship. It can season your worship. And, and it can make your worship more real, more robust, and more necessary than a life of ease. I once heard someone say that purposeful pain is the gift that the children of God can expect. Purposeful, of course, is the key word here. What if we could see pain as a gift? What if we could see pain as something that has purpose, God's purpose in it? What if we remembered that Satan wants us to, to be destroyed and diminished by pain? But God wants to develop and draw us nearer to himself through times of pain and struggle. You know, I preach a sermon uh, at least every other week, sometimes every week, sometimes multiple times a week. But, but I really think that um, more than a good word or more, more than a, a good sermon that is preached, the most powerful sermons are not actually ones that are preached from a pulpit or behind a camera. I think that the most powerful sermons are ones that are lived out in real life. Uh, I think that the most powerful sermons that are lived out in real life are ones that are lived out through times of struggle and pain. You know, I'll never forget standing with a couple who had just lost their son to violence. Um, their son was young and he died suddenly and tragically. But I remember... Um, their parents, his parents, were, were heartbroken, and, and they were grieving, of course. But not too long after his death, I remember standing behind them during a worship service. And um, I stood in awe just watching them worship. They weren't just singing the words to the songs. They were really worshiping. They, they had their hands held together, and they raised them up in the air. And it was so powerful to witness them singing the words to the song, How Great Is Our God. They said, name above all names, worthy of our praise. How great is our God? How great is our God? Now they sang it through tears and with a lot of brokenness, but they were making a declaration that God is worthy of our praise, not just during good times, but maybe sometimes especially during the hardest times of our lives. He's what anchors us. He's what gives us the grace and the strength to be, with, to be able to withstand the hardest of times in life. That was a sermon that I saw lived out and I'll never forget. You know, maybe people, many people, they, they love the, the verse Philippians 4.13, which says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you, you don't need a lot of strength to get through easy times in life, do you? So maybe we, we need to remember that, that I can do all things means I can do hard things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do painful things through Christ who strengthens me. I can endure struggle and hardship through Christ, the God of all grace, who strengthens me. And becoming stronger and more established in my faith and being marked by grace is a gift that the children of God can expect to endure in this lifetime.
the God of all grace, who called you into his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. See, the good news is that there is eternal glory that awaits all of us who are in Christ. But along the way, God will restore us, make us strong, firm, and steadfast. None of the suffering that we experience or see in this world right now is going to be for always. And though in this life we will see many hardships, those hardships will deepen our faith and can embed us with the grace that God freely gives us. So why is it important that believers are marked by this grace and strengthened and more firmly established in our faith through suffering and struggle? It's because as a result of our faith, God gets the glory. See, the verse that follows 1 Peter 5.10 is verse 11 that says, To Him be the power, and in some translations it says, Also, and the glory forever and ever. To Him be the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Your life is a sermon that preaches the glory of God. And it can preach the loudest when we praise Him through the, through the pain, um, when we trust Him through the trials of life, and when we are strengthened by our struggles. Now, I'm not saying that I, I hope that 2024 is not filled with lots of reason to celebrate and, and, and lots of gladness and joy, but I pray that whatever may come our way, we will be marked by grace and the God of all grace will strengthen us so that we will remain steadfast and be more firmly established in our, in our faith. And because of that, to Him be the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And as always, we appreciate y'all so much for watching. Now, be sure to stay connected with us by clicking that little subscribe button. All you have to do is click here to join. <laughs> oh, and you know what? While you're here, be sure to check out this video that we know you're going to love. We'll see you next time, guys, and God bless.